If you've seen my channel before or just spent lots of time doing 3D printed calibration, then hopefully you've come across this. This is Califlower, which is an object and accompanying spreadsheet calculator that I created early in 2022 as a method of improving size and skew calibration on your 3D printer. It's been pretty popular and it's been quite a few months now since I created it, so I thought I'd create a new design and integrate lots of new features and improvements. So that's what we're calling Cali Lantern, and today I want to show you a bit more about it. Luckily for you, as I'm releasing this video, my Christmas sale is starting. Is a Christmas sale a thing? I don't know, but it is now. So over on vector3d.co.uk from the 21st to the 31st of December, there's a really big sale on daybreak LEDs. So if you want to go fetch some, now is probably the time to do it. In addition to that, because we're releasing this today, I wanted to give the first 100 users a 30% discount, approximately rounded to the nearest penny, on this design as well. So code for that will be in the description. Thank you very much also to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is a all-in-one manufacturer and assembly service for PCBs, but now they also do CNC machining, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and 3D printing. It's really easy to use. You can just upload your files and you'll get an instant quote and automated design for manufacturer feedback to help you just in case you need to improve your design a little bit. They also sponsor educational and engineering programs. So to try out PCBWay's easy ordering service, follow the link in the video description to pcbway.com. So this design, as I mentioned, is called Cali Lantern because it's used for calibration and it looks like a lantern, a bit, kind of. It's not really important what it's called. The important thing is it does great calibration. So let me print one off and I'll show you how it works. The first thing you notice in the difference between the old Cali flower and the new Cali lantern, it is no longer a mostly flat design. You've got these large wings which allow for calibration in more planes. So you can do the XY plane with this, but this one also adds ZY and ZX. So all three major planes of the 3D printer can now be cal calibrated for size and skew. Also, if you have a smaller printer like a Voron V0, this one would fit inside it, but this one is a little bit wider, a little bit longer. So you can now scale it down to less than 100% or up further as much as you want. What I do recommend though, is make sure you have tools suitable for measuring. I've had some people print off large ones and then go, oh dear, <laughs> I can't measure it because my calipers are not large enough. So just make sure you have large enough calipers before you go and print one that's 200% scale. Now that it's printed, it's onto the measuring. As I go through this, you'll see that there's a new, more advanced measurement status, which takes a few more things into account to let you know whether the line of measurements that you've just taken is good, not so great, or probably wrong. So pay attention to that. If you're getting lots of errors, then there may be something wrong with where you're measuring on the print. So just be a bit careful, try to make the measurements as perpendicular as you can, and avoid any bumps or unevenness in the surface. Alongside doing the measurements of the file that we've just printed, now I've integrated an iterative method. Iterative method means you, you kind of, you do a thing, you measure the thing, and then you have an outcome. And then you can use that outcome to go back into the, like, the start and run again, which means you can go from like a big error to a smaller error, to a smaller error, to a smaller error, or it can go from big to like slightly one side, slightly the other side, but hopefully the idea is over time, if you do a few, you get a very accurate result. Typically, you don't need more than one, but specifically for things like skew measurements or printers which are very skewed, it can take a couple of iterations for best results. Once you've taken all the measurements, which takes around 15 minutes, that's pretty much all your hard work done. All the complex stuff is down to the calculator. So it'll work out for your three main firmwares, which are Marlin, RepRap firmware and Clipper. It works out all your skew, any new steps per millimeter or something, if that's suggested. Um, filament shrinkage, all this kind of stuff is all just bundled into output values on the spreadsheet, which you can like copy into your firmware, whatever. So you can get those new results without having to work out all the different calculations and stuff that you would otherwise need to do. While it may sound a bit complicated, you don't need to worry about understanding it either because there's a really big guide that comes with it as well. I took quite a lot of time to make sure I crammed as much information into that as possible. So if you do have any questions as you're going along, you can read through the guide and that should give you pretty much everything you ever need to know about calibrating size and skew using Kelly Lantern. 
Finally, as a nice indicator, or for those doing 3D printer reviews that just need a kind of a summary of the results, there's now a score value. And this will give you a score between zero and a thousand as an indicator of your 3D printer's accuracy in both size and skew. After implementing any adjustments from the calculator, we can then print another one as a means of validation to check that the new dimensions and skew values and stuff that we implemented are gonna give us an improved result. And that's pretty much it. Once you've validated it, you're good to go onto all your other really good 3D printing projects with more accurate and less skewed prints. At this point, you might have some questions about like the design in general and why it is what it is. Error is decreased with larger sizes. So really, the bigger the better. You just don't wanna go overboard and make something that's very difficult to print. So what I've tried to accommodate here is a big enough size to reduce errors and improve accuracy as much as possible, but not so big that it takes like huge amounts of filament and really long time to print. So this does take a couple of hours, maybe, maybe up to three on a slower printer, but you do have to print like only one or two for that printer, like ever. After that, you've got all the values you need and you don't need to necessarily print it again unless you like do some major changes. The other reason for going with this approximate size is that most people in 3D printing community have calipers that are about 150 millimeters. This is a really common size for calipers and therefore also a pretty good value. Does this print take ages? Um, well, it depends what you're comparing it to. If you're comparing it to a 20 mil calibration cube that basically provides literally no information about the status or quality of the print, then yes, it takes ages. But quality and accuracy requires large, good, well-designed prints. So yes, it takes longer, but trust me, it's worth it. So does the print quality matter? Uh, it's a bit of a yes and no. On the critical faces, yes, the print quality matters. If it's all over the place and you can't get a good, consistent measurement, then the value of doing this is significantly reduced. In all the other places where you're not measuring, I wouldn't worry about it, it doesn't matter too much. As long as it's not like majorly warped from the cooling or come off the bed and stuff like that, then you should be okay. Do you really need to calibrate? Well, there are some machines which you could argue don't need calibration at all. One of those would be like the Prusa Mark III behind me, which has an inbuilt XY calibration, and the other two planes are reasonably precise just by being built. Pretty much every printer can benefit from some amount of calibration. Do you have to do it? No. If you're doing like aesthetic models and they don't have to assemble to other things, you're probably not gonna gain much from doing it. But if you're printing like engineering parts or parts that need to assemble and fit together, precision, consistency, and accuracy all start to become far more important. At which point, doing some calibration, spending some time on getting it right, you'll probably find super valuable. So that's gonna be it from me today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join the Discord. Links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.